Good morning, everyone. It's Eddie J on crypto. Hope you're having a great day. Let's talk bank check fraud. First of all, it's a $15.1 billion issue. Okay. Bank check fraud is huge. It accounts for 60% of deposit frauds out there. 60%. Wow. $15 billion. Yeah. So the way it works is you'll receive a check and that person will ask you, hey, can you go deposit this check, please? And let's let's say it's a hundred dollar check. You deposit the hundred dollar check. Hey, keep twenty five dollars for yourself and send me the other seventy five. And can you send that via Venmo? Because that's why I'm asking you to do it, because I'm kind of I kind of need the money, blah, 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 blah. There are a couple of things that are going on in the message, right? The first one is the urgency. They give you a sense of urgency to it. Then on top of that, they're willing to part with some of their money for you doing the favor. Here's the problem. The problem is you go deposit the check. That check was either a completely bogus check or a check that's already been deposited, right? which you can't do, you can't do it twice. Or even worse, it's a cashier's check and cashier's checks suck because they come with an air of trust, but not actual trust. What it means is that it's a Reagan era law that says that if you get a cashier's check, you gotta, you gotta process that within 24 hours. So within 24 hours, you've received money, except it's not your money, but we'll get to that. Anyway, you receive money, You take the 75 bucks, send it on forward, and you keep the $25 in your bank account. Cool. You move on. Not a big deal. Except the lagging bank processes finally catch up and go, oh, hey, that's a bogus check. We're going to need our money back. Now you're short $100. Not $100 from the additional $25 point. But when from when you just started. So if you had a if you had two hundred dollars in your bank account, now you're short one hundred dollars. And salt in the wound, you get hit with bouncing a check. Ah, that's a fee, and that hurts. Now, the banks are kind of in on this on this fraud, right? Because their systems are so slow, they process the they only partially process the transaction, giving you money, and now you're responsible for their loss because their systems are slow, all that good stuff. Now it's kind of not their fault, right? They they jump through some hoops, new law passed, they have to do it, blah, 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 blah. But the systems are not really caught up to everything that's going on. Here's something else that'll bust your little bubble. Bank check fraud has actually increased, even though checks have decreased. And you're wondering why. The reason why is because you got these things on your on your bank cards, right? And it's called a chip. Was it the EVM or EV chip? It looks like this right there. So. Because of that security on the card, fraudsters have moved over to checks. And it's a booming business. It's crazy, but it's a booming business. And you're probably sitting there scratching your head. Eddie, you talk about crypto. Why are you talking about bank check fraud? Well, here's why I'm talking about bank check fraud. The comparison between a check and crypto night and day night and day right fraud can happen with checks fraud doesn't happen with crypto phishing attacks happen with crypto somebody tricking you into making your account vulnerable and then they go and snatch stuff that's what they do but fraud If you don't have the money in your account, that transaction isn't happening. 
So if I've got $100 in my account and I try to buy something for $200, nope, not going to happen because you don't have enough money in your account. How do you know this? Because it's public on the blockchain. That wallet's address, its amount of digital assets is noted on the blockchain. As a matter of fact, it's noted in every transaction. So when a, when a crypto transaction happens, that's actually some of the data that gets sent across because of transparency and speed. This is why one of the reasons why crypto and digital transactions happen so quickly and are so trustworthy. The reason why is because in that transaction, I know how much you made. I know how much money is in that account, rather. So if I've got $100 in my account, I want to buy something that's $200, not going to happen. And that $200 can be in any, any crypto, right? Uh, Doge, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Ripple, Stellar, name a coin. It could be whatever hundred of that asset is, okay? But with checks, that's not what happens, especially with a cashier's check. Cashier check comes, you go to the bank teller and you go, hey, I want to cash this check. They hand you back the money. Still against your account, your deposit account. Mm. Now, what they want, what the fraudster wants you to do again is cash the check. You know, money goes into your account, and then send them the money via Venmo or whatever have you, because they have some kind of expediency or urgency to the transaction. It's a long play situation, right? It takes them however long to convince you to do it. it. takes you however long to deposit the check. It takes the bank however long to figure it out. But meantime, you've received money that isn't yours. Sound like a retail transaction with credit cards? It's because it's just like it. When a store receives money from a credit card transaction, it takes a long time to get there. When a store receives money via digital currency transaction, it's relatively fast. Within the same day and usually within seconds or minutes. But bank check fraud is very, very, very ubiquitous, basically. As a matter of fact, for every check that's written... You can account three dollars. You can you can account bank check fraud as costing the bank three dollars to, to to handle every check out there because everything they have to do to check against it. None of what they do is instant like with crypto. So I'm talking about this because I happen to know personally two people that have been through bank check fraud. One person was responsible for the money that hit the bank. The next person, because they were diligent in checking their statements every month, every day, they were just in it, didn't have to pay anything, and they fought back against that, that's right, against that fee, salt in the wound. Oh, just really? And it was a $12 fee in that last case. A $12 fee. Holy moly. Everything about banking is a fee. Change your mind about something? There's a fee. Burp? There's a fee. I'm just saying, there's a fee about everything except Look at the, the level of service that you get. It doesn't actually equate to anything. So when everybody talks about, you know, the security and safety of crypto and it's, you know, I don't know and I don't trust it. I trust crypto more than I trust banking transactions. And this is why a transaction is not going to happen if the digital assets are not there. As soon as that transaction, you know, hits the blockchain, those assets are locked. So that's not the case with almost anything having to go through a traditional financial institution, credit cards, checks. But I say this to you, please manage your accounts well. Do your own research. Manage your accounts. If somebody asks you to cash a check, the answer is no. The answer is absolutely no. I'm not, I'm not depositing this check for you. Nope. Nope, not at all. Because you don't know how long it's going to be for the bank to actually clear that transaction. So however long it takes them to actually clear the transaction, you're open to having that bounce check fee and being responsible for those 
funds being stolen because the bank's not going to take that loss. The bank is going to exact that from you. Even if you go and you liquidate your account, you close your account, they still know who you are. They will come after you. It'll hit your credit report, all that stuff. So be mindful when it comes to people asking you about checks. Anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto. Do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and absolutely hit the notification bell so you know when I'm actually dropping a new video. And by the way, I'm dropping new video shorts to help you get through the content that we currently have. Doing all that lets me and my kids know that you like what we're doing and you appreciate it because I'm not the only one doing research. My kids do the research too. Anyway, hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.